Let his blood be upon us and our children. Don't forget those words. Jesus really is the one. Jesus really, truly is the one. If you recall, all throughout Lent, we've been reflecting on this particular theme, and now today it kind of reaches a crescendo. This is the same Jesus, mind you, that throughout Lent has been this magnificent, marvelous, miraculous human being, demonstrating time after time that he is the Son of God, the Messiah. And you'll, yet look how it ended up. Look how it ended up today. He was executed. He was cruelly crucified. He was tortured and beaten. He was crushed for being the Son of God. You know, so often I think our minds just can't fathom it. It's just so huge when we think about it. But do recall that what all of this is about is making sure that we die a good death. See, throughout Lent, everything that we've done has been trying to order us, trying to help us to grow and get better, to grow closer to God, to, to become holier people, to renounce all of the evils that are in our lives. I mean, make no mistake, what just happened in the gospel was our corrupted human nature run amok. Our corrupted, all the way back at the beginning of Lent, that was the very first reading. Adam and Eve. By no accident did that end up being the very first thing we reflected on that Sunday was that Adam and Eve sinned and were all tainted since then with the original sin. Make no mistake on that. And ever since then, what was the lie that the devil gave them? Surely you will not die. Remember it? It was a long time ago. I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, come on, that was like five, six weeks ago. Come on, Father. But no, the, the lie was, surely you will not die. And now the Son of God comes along to a humanity that has been dying for millennia. And they're still waiting and still waiting and they're still wondering. And then last week, Jesus stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come out. And he came out. Talk about a miracle. And yet he was only resuscitating. And now we end up this week with our Lord and Savior being cruelly tortured and executed and laid in a tomb. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus really is the one. And if he truly is the one, then nothing can be the same in our lives. Nothing can remain the same. Everything has to be different. Everything has to change about who we are. And let's face it, our corrupted nature has led us to sin. You know, all throughout the Old Testament, if you keep reading the Old Testament, if you've done the, the Bible in a year with Father Mike Schmitz, you've heard it. Over and over again, you hear about these blood sacrifices that are made for the atonement of sins. Again and again, you hear in the Old Testament that these animals were sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins. And now today, we hear about these sacrifice. This execution, this horrific death, is actually a sacrifice. And his blood poured out is poured out upon you and your children. You just said those words a few minutes ago. Let his blood be upon us in an irony because his blood is what is the forgiveness of our sins. The sprinkling of a lamb's blood, the sprinkling of a heifer's blood, in the Old Testament mentality, was cleansing of sin. But now in the New Testament, we don't do that anymore. Why? Because the Lamb was slain. Jesus Christ, the perfect, innocent, beautiful man that he was, the Son of God, though he was, Jesus Christ died, died a cruel and horrific death. His blood shed so that we could be redeemed, so that we could be forgiven. We're all sinners and we're all going to die. It's not that we're sinners, we have to do something about that. It's not that we're going to die, we have to prepare for that. It's that we can't do it without Jesus Christ. Jesus, who really is truly the one. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, let's not let this week slip away from us. We begin now Holy Week, the holiest week of the year. 
This is the most precious time that the church has offered to us because what do we need? We really need a savior now, don't we? We really need this story that we just heard to not end in hint, hint, it wasn't the end of the story. We still have next week. But for now, let's enter into this great mystery. Let's enter into this mystery of what we call Holy Week. One of the things that I think if you haven't done it yet can make Holy Week a turning point for us is the sacrament of confession. Going to confession this week. We have Mercy Monday tomorrow. All, all afternoon, churches all around the area are going to have priests and confessionals. Take advantage of us. Go ahead. We'll, we'll be waiting for you. Come to any church anywhere and go to confession. If not, there are other times you can check the bulletin. There'll be other times later in the week when you'll have the opportunity. But take that opportunity. Make plans now to be part of Holy Thursday night when we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper. When we'll once again take Jesus in one last time before Easter. Go, to, go with him into the garden. But then also, too, not only go with him into the garden, more specifically than on Good Friday, we'll again recount just the Passion. And once again, hear that our Lord and Savior died. And then, of course, at the Easter Vigil, the mother of all the liturgies, he will be again proclaimed as Lord and Savior. So, so plan now. Don't let this week slip away. Don't let it get away from you again. The last couple of years have been filled with trials and tribulations of all the, the, the stuff that was going on in our society. But guess what? Jesus Christ really is the one. And it's up to you, it's up to me to commit ourselves and to be prepared for next Sunday when it all will change and become clearer as to what just happened. But for now, know that his blood is upon you and upon your children. His blood is upon me, but not in condemnation, in redemption. He is the one, the Lord, the Savior. And because of that, we thank God, for he is the one who came to make it possible for us to have hope. And that death, which was imputed from the beginning as a punishment, will now become a reward for those who die well. God love you.